My name's Graham from Wilden Services. This is the boiler house at the Bay Primary School Sandown on the Isle of Wight. To my right we have the cold water storage tank which feeds the cold water booster set which ultimately feeds the whole building with hot and cold water. Behind me we have the BMS panel which was uh, demonstrated earlier to you but down to the uh, right hand side at low level is the incoming water main with the main stopcock to isolate the building of all water services. On this wall we have the heating equipment. Uh, I'm touching at the moment the pressurisation unit for the heating. Joining that is the pressure vessel for the heating which will connect up to the boilers. Other parts of the heating equipment include a strainer valve which is underneath this protective lagging box, a dosing pot to put chemicals for flushing and cleaning the heating system which should be carried out annually. You'll find all this information in the ONM manuals. We walk along the boilers, uh, pipe work and find the primary pump for the hot water services, the primary pump for the heating services, an air and dirt separator, air out of the top, dirt out of the bottom. We walk back along and we have the boilers. Two boilers underneath a manifold which includes gas and isolation valves. You can see the blue for the flow, red for the return and the yellow for the gas. Um, there's a drop down panel on each boiler with a little panel which um, gives you uh, various controls for the boilers and the main thing to find here is if, if you have any problems and you want to check the boilers there's normally a flashing uh, code which will give us some idea of what the problem will be. Above the boilers you've got isolation valves and the flues. Located on the back wall between the incoming cold water storage tank and booster set is the incoming gas main. Um, here you'll find the main isolation valve to the gas for the whole of the building. It's a quarter of a turn shut down to this position here from uh, 12 o'clock to 3 o'clock. Um, here we have a typical underfloor heating manifold and pipe work. Over to my right we've got the main flow and return pipe work with isolation valve, a commissioning station which also acts as an isolation valve as well. All the um, water has been set to design balancing uh, for the appropriate manifold. Down below as we go down further you've got a, uh, a commissioning bypass to allow you to do any work without upsetting the manifold. Above that we have two more isolation valves, a pump which controls the circuits of the manifold and the various zones. You can see the numbers from 1 to 8 in this instance. These will all go round to various zones which are linked back to a control panel and a sensor controlled in here from the sensor via the pump and this stat here. Part of the underfloor heating system is controlled by a sensor. Each location and area will have its own sensor. Um, they're tamper proof. To get them off you prize the two little tabs on the side pull away and inside you have a, a stat um, which can be moved to what temperature. These are generally set at 19 degrees. Um, we turn them up, that's gone up to 26, the lights come on which means the heating system is engaged and it's calling for heat. Turn it down, it goes off. Uh, we think it's quite comfortable at 19 degrees. On the underfloor heating um, is the little indicator. We set them 19 degrees Click it up to, to get more heat down to a lower temperature. Um, as you can see it came on at about 22 degrees which, is, which will be too warm if we were to leave it there. So I'm going to knock it back down to 19 degrees and put the cover back on. Push it in one side in the little tabs, just push your finger till it clicks and that's done. Back on.